Although I would say there was something that took place that made Christianity real in my life. And that was when um, I, the Lord brought trials into my life and I experienced something that I thought I wouldn't experience. And I saw the need to live for Christ truly here on earth and what it means to live for Christ on earth. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Tell Me More. I'm Lo, this is Jem. Hey guys. And we're just going to have a chat today. Not sure where this conversation is going to go, but hopefully uh, you'll enjoy it and we'll just, yeah, maybe maybe a bit of a get to know us sort of vibe. What do you reckon, Jem? Yeah. You're going to beg the question, tell me more. Exactly. After each point. <laughs> <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> How about, we've already mentioned my favourite question of the whole, of my yep. life is Sorry. tell me something I don't know about you. Yeah. Are you going to give me a different rendition of that kind of question? No. Because I, I feel like I've answered. I feel like you haven't. Not it's in a while anyway. Time. But something you don't know about me, Larissa. You do this to me all the time. I know, but I it's just, just such a great question. question. All right, I'll think of another good <coughs> question while you answer this question. Okay, so it's more than one question. <laughs> um, tell me something. Hmm. Uh, I often think about uh, what I should have studied instead of the uni degree that I did study. Oh, yeah. What should you have studied? I don't know. I think something more around children, I think. Like Maybe teaching? a teacher. Oh. Yeah. Fair enough. Possibly. Or like social working. Teaching is such a generic. Yeah. And I'm n- I feel like something that has a bigger purpose too. Props to all the teachers out there. I could not do that job. Yeah. Like I, I would, I don't know, I would not make a good teacher. Mm. But I think something with a more purpose, more fulfillment. I think your job does have purpose and fulfillment, though, yeah. just in a different way. In a way. different way, yeah. I mean, I do help people out, but not in a not in an overwhelming way, I guess. Mm. Like, you help out people when they're sick. Don't you just feel like, oh, wow, that was nice? Yeah. I guess that's probably, <laughs> like, the only good thing about my job. <laughs> uh, uh, I get you. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So that's a tell good me one. one thing I don't know about you, then. Um, I hate this question. (laughs) One thing you don't know about me. I, mm, I wish that I had like a good skill. Mm. Like I wish. We were talking about this yesterday. We were talking about this yesterday. Like what's your skill? What's your one like unique thing? Yeah. Like a hidden talent kind of thing. yeah, Yeah. I just. I thought about it after we finished talking about it the other night and I couldn't come up with anything and that makes me really sad. I wish I had something that was like, Larissa can do blah, blah, blah and it's really cool, but I can't. She can belt out in song, which is pretty cool, guys. No, but that's not, it's not a thing, like it's not a skill, like a, it's not a skill, like a cool skill. I think it's pretty cool. Mm, That's just because you don't have that (laughs) skill. Poor Gemma, I always make fun of her because she's tone deaf. Yeah. Um, but you're not the only some one. Some things so. you just it's just some things you can't do. The Lord didn't life. bless me in that aspect of You probably would have just been too good. Yeah, I reckon. That's why. I always say God didn't give me a good voice because I would be boastful. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I would be singing twenty four seven. Not that I don't. <laughs> Fair enough. No, you still sing. Just yeah. I don't really care as long Sometimes as Sometimes you get it, it though. Yeah, look, sometimes I surprise myself, but it, I can never do it again. Mm. I can't imagine what that would be like. <laughs> wow. Maybe I should do um, singing lessons. Yeah, do some voice lessons with Rye. Yeah, I'd be too embarrassed to <laughs> get enough judgment from you. <laughs> I don't need more judgment. I'll stop. No, I won't. Uh, okay, did you think of, think, think of another tough question? Another tough question. Why, why does it have to be tough? Why can't it be... Yeah, simple. A good question. Tell me I something that made you happy this week. Something that made me happy. I saw an answer to prayer this week. Yeah, tell us about it. Um, was it this week? Today's Monday. So no, last week, a couple of days ago though, 
Um, I had been praying for a particular person um, that God would just um, send someone to water the seed. Uh, I've tried to, you know, be a good testimony, uh, give the gospel a couple times, and I, I literally just prayed God, you know, I've done all that I could do, like send someone to water that seed that hopefully I've planted. And literally a couple of days later, I found out that someone had watered the seed. Mm. And I was just so literally like mind blown. I'm like, how can this be possible? I prayed about it a couple of days ago. And I honestly, it's probably not the best thing to say, but I, I prayed about it and I didn't think much of it, you know. Mm. I prayed that God would do this thing and I believed that he could, but I didn't really think much of it after the prayer, you know, just went about my day. And then when I saw that answer to the prayer, I was like, wow, Lord, you're, you're awesome. So mm. that made me happy. That's really cool. Yeah. God hears our prayers and he answers them. Mm. Even when we maybe don't have enough faith. Yeah. Or we don't put in enough eff effort in our yeah. prayers. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's not simple as waiting a couple of days. Like mm. sometimes you're waiting years because I had, I'd known this person for years on end and not until yeah. a couple of days ago where I saw um, a little, a little movement. So yeah, be faithful really and cool. keep praying. The Lord, the Lord answers prayer. How about you? Something make you happy this week? Um, I'm sure something did. <laughs> No, I had an opportunity to go to another church's camp mm -hmm. this past week, which was really, really cool. And I saw God do a lot of great things uh, in that way. And I got to meet a lot of cool people and just something that really stood out to me from that experience and is that, you know, God is working in other places and there are other people who are doing God's work. Like we're not alone in what we're doing. Yeah. I think sometimes we can get maybe a bit discouraged and we can have a bit of like tunnel vision and think yeah. I'm the only one that's, you know, doing this or our church is the only one, you know, doing this. But there are so many people out there who love God just like we do mm -hmm. and who are serving him and winning people to Christ, which is really cool. And yeah. it made me that is happy cool. and gave me a bit of a new perspective. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's very refreshing yeah. to see that. I know we've seen it a couple of times, um, seeing people at conferences, churches coming to one church to worship together and yeah. hear, hear the word of God. Uh, yeah, going on, com um, what's it called, mission trips is awesome. You get to experience that as well. So, yeah, that's good, Lou. Mm. Something to be very happy about. Um, Your turn to ask a question. Yeah. Can I ask a tough one though? Okay. But it's kind of stolen off you. Because I know once you asked me this question and I thought about it and I was like, I don't know how to answer that. Mm, so I had to think I'm about curious it. now. What's the question? Um, tell me one thing that's challenging you. Oh, right now. I knew it would be that yeah. one. That's something that made <laughs> me think because I couldn't answer it straight away. I had to think about it. I literally went home <sighs> and I was thinking about it. Mm. So thank you for made you think. Yeah, jogging my, my thoughts. Something that's challenging. I think so many things are challenging. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I think for me, something that's challenging me maybe right now, I could say my job, just juggling, you know, this the work with church and with my Christian life, mm -hmm. something that I'm growing in and trying to work through, you know, just you know, balancing my time and it's hard having to work when church is on and still trying to be an example to other people around me and still trying to serve God and grow while, you know, not being able to be in church or ministry every single time I should be. Yep. That's a challenge. It's a challenging thought for me and something that I've wrestled with and I think I'm still wrestling with trying to not justify it, but, you know, sort of make it work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had those thoughts um, this week. I was, I have my calendar. I put in everything that I have coming up in my calendar. I love visualizing it. 
And I was looking at it on Sunday to see what I have upcoming this week and I was packed out every day after work. I have something on and I'm just like, I'm going to be so tired. When am I going to get to sleep? And I have to socialise and I have, you know, church commitments as well. And how am I going to be like mentally there and, and able and willing to talk to people and have conversations when I feel like I'm just going to be completely wrecked. Mm. And so um, that that was challenging for me and thought of this verse. I don't know exactly how it goes, but it's in First Corinthians. Um, we do things that aren't necessarily profitable to us, but mm. we have to do things that profit others as well. So me thinking how I'm going to be tired really doesn't matter. Like, of course I need my rest, blah, blah, blah. But if you look at the greater picture and the perspective, like I got to be, I got to be ready and willing to encourage someone or have those conversations or just be a friendly, friendly person to someone, even though I'm not feeling mm. up to it, you know? Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Why don't you give us a bit of your testimony? I feel like we haven't, um, we haven't sort of shared our testimonies since mm-hmm. we've started this podcast. It might be good for people to get to know us a bit better. Yeah, that's a good idea. How we ended up here. Yeah. So right from the beginning, I guess. <coughs> Wherever you want to go from. Um, I will first start by saying <laughs> I didn't get saved at a young age as I'm assuming a lot of people did who are listening to the podcast. A lot of people say, you know, they said a prayer when they were like five or six, you know, with their parents. And I was like, oh, I never got that experience, blah, blah, blah. But um, obviously everyone's experience is different and still the same in the eyes of the Lord. So I um, was off and on in church growing up. I doubted, I heard about um, heaven and hell and having a home in heaven. And I, I wanted that, but I guess fear overtook the reality of it. So I was all in my head about dying and going to hell. So for many years, I doubted um, my salvation, although I had prayed a prayer and said the words that I should say and things like that. I I never came to God in a complete understanding of what he'd done for me and acknowledging my sin um, until 2016. I I just gave up and cried out to God and said, I can't do this on my own anymore. Um, my life's in your hand and I and I give it to you. So that was the day I would say I received Christ as my saviour. And from then on, life hasn't been easy. Life is never going to be easy, but Christ is with, with me through it all and he's given me that peace. So uh, that's how I guess I came to know Christ as my saviour. Um, when I think about my testimony, there's like one point in my life where although I was saved there was something that took place that made Christianity real in my life and that was when um I the Lord brought trials into my life and I experienced something that I thought I wouldn't experience and I saw the need to live for Christ truly here on earth and what it means to live for Christ on earth I I saw that the things on this earth truly don't matter for eternity. Mm. So the things I was focusing on, the things I prioritized, literally had no eternal value at all. Like you will die and none of this will add value to anything in heaven. Mm. Um, And so it wasn't until I realized that, um, that I realized I have to live my my life for Christ. And I guess from that day forward, my perspective changed. I, I saw people in a different light. Um, I wanted to tell people about the gospel. Uh, I wanted to just wholeheartedly commit my life to Christ in, in everything that I did. You know, I heard, I've heard this saying is, I've heard a saying, um, sorry, I'm stuttering a lot. <laughs> I've heard a saying when, when you die, like, what do you want your gravestone to say? Like, what do you want to be known for? Mm. You know, and I want to be known for loving Christ. Like I want people to look back and, and say oh she she loved the lord you know she did everything in her power to you know try to share that light of the gospel or try to be you know try to just help people you know through through anything that she could you know Mm. um i don't really know it's there's got to be a point in your life when you realize there's more to life than fulfilling your own desires your own your own goals and and 
expectations in life. There's more more to it than what you see and what you might receive here on this earth. Wow, that was really good. Thanks. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I, I enjoyed listening to you speak just then. That was... Thanks. I feel like I stutter like it. No, that was really good. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, Very so heartfelt. Yeah, you've got to be... Yeah, you've got to be just intentional and know that Christ is eternal and this life isn't. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. I'm proud of you, Jenny. Thanks. <laughs> uh, um, how about you, Lo? <laughs> uh, I probably had the testimony that Gemma was talking about. <laughs> wow. I uh, got grew up in church, grew up in Sunday school, mm-hmm. heard all the stories. You know, my family was very involved in church and the ministry. I My brother got saved when he was quite young and I remember him speaking to the whole class in I think it was Bible club or Sunday school the week that he got saved and he, you know, the teacher then gave us a really clear gospel presentation and I went home and I s- prayed with my mom. Um, I was scared of going to hell and I didn't want to. So we prayed together. I don't fully remember that, that moment. I don't remember that day. I, I think I was maybe four or five, five or six years old. Um, I think for me, I've sort of formed that memory in my mind f- from saying it so much. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I, I don't, it's like a memory that I've built for myself. Uh, but then growing up, you know, in church, uh, I had a lot of doubts. Um, I was a very scared child. I didn't like going to sleep at night. I thought that I was going to die and go to hell. I thought we were going to get attacked. And mm. I <laughs> all those crazy. Dreams. I had, yeah, I had some pretty vivid dreams when I was a kid. I was, a, yeah, just very scared. And that sort of continued, but I never really told anyone that I was feeling this way. I never, you know, voiced my doubt to anyone. I always thought that people would look down on me in a way. I thought that they would, you know, see uh, that, you know, who is this, you know, she's growing up in church. She should know, you know, she should sort of have it together, but I didn't. Uh, And it wasn't until a camp when uh, we when, yeah, I just sort of had had enough of keeping it all inside and spoke to a leader and we prayed together and I got assurance of my salvation that night. Um, And then, you know, life is not all roses and flowers after that. You know, you have your hard points, you have your your struggles. I really struggled with um, surrendering myself to God and you know his will for my life I had always known what I wanted to do with my life I always had a plan I always um, thought that I knew what was best uh, but I didn't and I really struggled you know handing my life over to God and you know submitting to his will and it wasn't until mm, it, it really like if I'm completely honest it wasn't until not that long ago where I finally just you know gave it all to God I'd been to Bible college for a year yes because you know I knew that that's what God wanted me to do but also in the back of my mind that whole time I was there I was like oh I'll do this for a year and then I'll come back and just keep doing what I wanted Um, so I was doing what God wanted me to do in that sense but still in the back of my mind I was always planning on doing whatever I wanted and that went on for a while, you know, I studied, I got the got a job and it wasn't until I was really, you know, praying for what God wanted for my life where I kind of realized, hey, I haven't given my whole life over to God, like I'm still in the driver's seat. Mm. Um, so, and that's not a decision that you make lightly and it's also not a decision that you make once off, that's something that you have to do constantly, you know, the decision to live for God and to do what he wants you to do is it's hard and it's something you have to decide every day and sort of always realign yourself with and that's you know you do that through reading his word and praying um, but yeah that's a bit about me and yeah. that's awesome Loi. I think we have similar aspects in that we got saved um, we received Christ as our savior and 
things didn't get easier from then. Mm. People have this misconception where you turn to Christ and life is all rainbows and, you know, good times. But there, there's a point in your life where, like you said, you had to surrender. And there was a point in my life where I had to surrender. And, and although you do have this assurance of a home in heaven, how are you living that in your life today? You know, you're saved, you're going to heaven, but you have all these years on this earth, God willing to live for him. So how are you grabbing hold of that and taking every opportunity that God gives you to to live it out? Mm. Yeah, I feel like, yeah. We both kind of experienced that after salvation. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a hard choice to make, but it's all worthwhile in the end. Mm-hmm. If you, you know, just have a heavenly perspective, if you change your perspective on life and you think uh, in matters of eternity, you see that, you know, what we, what I, or from, from experience, what I was fighting for for my own life, really it's not going to get me anywhere in eternity like we could you know sit here and you know I could fight for what I wanted I could live the life I wanted and then you know I could make a lot of money or I could be super successful and then I die and you know what does that get me Mm. you know it's only what uh what matters for eternity that counts and I think I I love the illustration in the bible where it you know it talks about all of our works being tried by fire that's something you've got to keep on your mind constantly like hey is what i'm doing if we put that in the flames is that gonna last or is that just gonna burn away Mm. and for majority of what we do it's just gonna burn away yeah Yeah. you know what's the you got to just focus on the the solid gold yeah you know things that will yeah the same things that will last yeah no that's awesome yeah Mm. I love the verse um, that says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Mm. So if you live your life out for the Lord now, with the time that you have, um, God will bless you beyond what you can ever imagine. So yeah, I think that's that's an awesome promise to claim and to just consider Mm. in your life. Yeah. I'm a big fan. Yeah, big fan of yours. Big fan of yours. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, um, what else should we let the peeps know about us? Mm. We're both still learning. Yeah. (laughs) I was going to say where we are right now, but like, I feel like that's part, uh, we're We're on the journey. We're on it. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I still struggle with a lot of things, I feel like we were we were talking about imposter syndrome earlier. <laughs> yes, I think that's a big one I, that I'm struggling with at the moment. Like yeah. I do not, I'm not worthy, or, or I don't deserve to be sitting here and talking to talking, you know, at other people. I don't have, I feel like I don't have the knowledge and stuff. So yeah, but you know, we're trying. We're working through we're growing we're learning Mm -hmm. and that's sort of what this in this podcast is us uh, is helping us do that as well yeah it's helping me study my bible more yes you know yeah i find myself with what free time that i have like preparing and studying and i'm i'm just like wow i really could have just scrolled on instagram for an hour yeah you know but i've i'm using my time more wisely and i'm so grateful for that Mm. yeah yeah, big imposter syndrome, but yeah, <laughs> God no. will, God will, yeah, um, bring to fruition what He has planned with this podcast. So we're excited to see, yeah, exactly. what comes next. Cool. Well, yeah. thanks for joining in again this week, guys. We hope that you have enjoyed a little bit of a get to know us. Um, we just shared our testimonies a bit. Uh, if you do have questions, if you do have topics you want to hear us talk about, definitely leave us a comment or. <clears throat> sorry dm us on instagram or something uh and if you would like subscribe like and subscribe to the channel uh we appreciate you taking the time uh, out of your day to listen and hopefully you've enjoyed um yeah. 
soon. Yeah, we will see you again next time.